hello and welcome to my channel please like share and subscribe if you like this video and thanks for watching thank you to my day ones twos and threes thank you to all my new subscribers that's coming in that means well thank you so very much and welcome 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 um this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only so everything is alleged some is not and the fair act use is in my description box, y'all. So let's get to it. I got a few things I want to talk to you all about this morning. I'm going to break up the videos because I don't want to talk about everything on one video. But um, the first thing that I wanted to talk about was, you know, I, ha I heard a little something, something too, y'all. I heard a little something too. Um, so I'm hearing this word on the street now, y'all. Okay is straight drop you know and this cornelius guy that's you know what's tying them together you know we know about you know they supposed to did the deed together and all of this stuff but you know a lot of people is saying that you know cornelius got caught first and then he told on straight drop and all of this stuff that's not what i'm hearing i am hearing that they found evidence in that car that tied them to straight drop okay y'all so in other words people are running around here saying that Cornelia Smith is tricking and that he got caught first and that's not true that makes that not true okay because if they found evidence in that car may it be because they said that they found fingerprints on of, of Cornelius in that car so did they find fingerprints of you know straight drop too okay now that's number one so that you know tells you that you know they're this is why things are moving a little slow because they have not started telling yet okay and i'm also hearing that you know straight drop you know they are now you know the, it's a federal case which means uh, rico uh, rico i told y'all okay so that means they he you know they are not talking as of yet that's what i get from this because if they are if they found evidence of straight drop in that white car that ties him to that white car and ties you know Cornelius Smith to that white car then possibly Cornelius Smith never told anything on straight drop they already had an idea that he was a part of it because of evidence that they found on that that car okay this is what I'm hearing now another thing that I'm hearing and I would not go into specifics about this but they are saying that, you know, they've been using some muscle men, you know, to shut people up and make people do what they want them to do. And they've said that, you know, somebody got some paws put on them. Now, I'm going to ask y'all this question. Who out of this whole crew then got beat up or something happened to them when it came down to Dolph's case? And I thought about everybody. I went down the line like who got a beat down or, you know. A Paul or something put on them doing this, you know, young golf case. And it led me to one person, y'all. Okay. It led me to the white lady that, you know, they say on the bins. Now, what's giving me um some red flags about this white bins is, you know, and, and it seems as if that the news people is having, you know, a tough time reporting this whole Dolph situation. Because even the news people is giving out different information that, you know, the witnesses and the Makita people and all of this stuff is giving out. So they'll say one thing, then the Makita's them will say something else. And then it's been back and forth that you don't know who to believe because the story keeps changing. Okay. Now, the red flag that I get about this white bands. And I'm just going to tell y'all like it is, okay? Ever since I've been doing, following the Mo3 case, a lot of clues come in threes, y'all. And this is another clue in threes that does not, it doesn't add up. Now, first of all, I would like to know where is the footage? Where is the footage? We don't have the footage to the Makita store. We don't have the footage to somebody taking the white bins from the lady. And... Several red flags is going up about this white bins and this lady because I am still thinking that this car is tied to a black youngster, y'all. And they're trying their best to, you know, cover it up to get them off. Okay. Um, main red, the first red flag about the white bins and the white lady. Okay. 
is the clues and threes of the th three people that's involved with this car when it comes to this news report. Now, the first lady that's talking on the news, that's one. Not the news lady, but the woman that's talking that didn't want to show her face. Huh. That's one woman. Lady that was talking on the news. Number two, the second lady is the person that was hit. Okay. So there was a, they're saying this was an older woman. We don't know. They didn't give out that information or whatever that I saw. But word on the street, it was an older lady that got hit, you know, in the face or something with a toy. And the car was taken from her. This is what they're spinning on, on the news. Okay, y'all. Now, that's the second woman. Okay. Now, the third woman is the actual person who owns the car. Why is it three people that we have to go through to get to the right person that really owns the car? Those are red flags to me. Because you got a person that's on the news that's talking for somebody else that was hit up that borrowed the car from somebody else. That alone screams, you know, it's something ain't right about this picture. Okay. Now, when I think about that, I think about this, y'all. First of all, when anything happens to like a white person, and I'm not trying to be prejudiced at anything like that, you know, they, they send out sirens through the news and everywhere else that, you know, this woman was attacked by, you know, African Americans, her beans was taken at a, you know, at you know the the gas station this would have been on all the news platforms so that people could find out who did this to this woman we didn't hear about this car being missing and all of this stuff until after Dolph was taken out now I want y'all to pay attention to this okay because something don't add up with this white beans and this white woman who is she and I really would like to see the, the, the footage that they took this car from her. I would also like to see, you know, they got to show something that this woman even owns this car. Because I'm not hearing that. I'm hearing that, yo, you know, black youngster owns this car. And they are trying to cover it. This is what I'm hearing. So who is this white woman that's on here, you know, speaking for somebody else that's speaking for somebody else? Don't make a lot of sense to me. You don't have one person on the news talking for somebody else that got hit, that borrowed the car from somebody else. Red flags all over the place, y'all. Okay? Not making a lot of sense. It seems as if it's a lie. And then when I ask questions about this whole situation, the only thing this, this person could tell me, okay? You know, my little birdie. Only thing they could tell me it was that, you know, people are getting, you know, Pause put on them because of this whole situation. She's the only one that got hit with something. So was this, you know, I, I'm not trying to be funny. But I know a lot of, you know, people that's on the street pharmacy stuff. Whatever race it may be. Because it's a lot of whites that's on the street pharmacy stuff too. And um, could she have gotten hit with something just so they can lie and put up this lie? Ask yourself this question. Was that hit for something else that, you know, you better, you know, come forward and say this and that so it can clear my name? I just want y'all to think about this from different angles because we are not, we didn't hear about this whole situation until the Dolph stuff happened. And for, you know, two men to jump out of a car and take this white woman's car and hit her in the face or whatever with something. This would have been all over the news. This would have seriously been all over the news. Ain't no way that, you know, we know for a fact that they had this car for over a week and they probably had it longer than that. So when did she first even report this crime taking place? That's a question that needs to be answered. Um, I just don't see somebody doing a crime like that to, you know, a white woman at that and still riding around comfortable in a car for a week doing crimes in it. First, you know, we know for a fact that the same car was, you know, in the midst of the Covington thing. And then a week later or so in the Dolph case. 
So these guys had this car riding around for a week in it. And I just don't see that. If you were in a big case where you just hit a white woman in the face, there's, you know, and there's possibly footage. I don't see it. I'm sticking with the black youngster part in that car. I see, I smell a lot in there somewhere, okay? And the only way that the guys felt comfortable to keep riding around in this car doing more crimes in this car was the fact that it was a car that was given to them that they could ride around in and do whatever they wanted with it. And it was also a part of this play that they were putting together to get, you know, Dolph out the way. It doesn't make any sense about the white woman. And I'm just going to be completely honest. Ain't no way in the world that, you know, two black guys is going to steal a car. Hit this woman in the face with it. Turn around and go do another crime. Keep the hold on to this car for this long. And then go take off off in it. It's no way. It's no way. They could have gotten pulled over any time during that week. It's no way they would have been comfortable like that. So something screams a lot in here somewhere. Okay. So if that's the case, who's paying these white people to tell a lie that that's their car? Okay. And if they has no ties at all to a black youngster, when we know black youngster, he like white women. So if they have no ties to black youngster and all of this other stuff, why are you, you know, everybody's hiding a face. Even though the person that came on the news hid her face and she has nothing to do with it. She just says that she knows the person. Okay. So that should tell you something. There is, I smell a lot in here amongst these three women. So what really happened? Or did it happen like this? Did, did, did somebody tell this girl, you know, you got to go along with this. And was hitting, you know, the, 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 whoever this older woman was, was hitting her in the face, just, you know, a scare tactic, y'all, to get her, you know, them to go along with the story. Because this is what I'm hearing that, you know, some pause or something was put on, piece of muscle being came in, it's, tr it's trying to clean this whole thing up. Okay, so this makes a lot of sense. This also makes a lot of sense to, you know, certain bloggers on their page saying, well, why would they tell on straight drop and he ain't telling on everybody else? So I want to just think about y'all to think about something with that situation as well. Okay, now, <clears throat> how many times have you all watched shows in this and that and, you know, true crime stuff and all that stuff? And they have paid hitters to go do a crime to somebody. Okay. Just say anybody. They pay somebody to do a crime. Whether it be out of town hitters or in town hitters. They pay this particular hitters to go take somebody out. Now, just because you are being paid to take somebody out don't mean you know the whole play. They don't tell you, oh, um, Makita's then put the cameras in just so that, you know, they can have a little, you know, Make it look as if that they were being responsible and had a little alibi for why they did this and why they did that. They ain't explaining all of this to the hitters. The hitters is getting paid to do their part. They're not sitting them down saying, oh, and this person, gonna, they going to do this. And this person right here, they going to do that. And this person right here, they going to do that. So just because, you know, <laughs> this don't even make no sense. Just because somebody is a part of a crime don't mean that they have, are telling them the whole play. That don't mean that they're telling them, oh, Mondays and Wednesdays, you know, they're not at home. So you go in there on that day and you do that. Da, 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 da. That don't mean they went down the line and told them everything. So maybe they don't know everything. OK, that's number one. Number two, the reason why that, you know, other people's probably not getting arrested is because they are not talking yet. Because I just told y'all they said. That there were evidence. They would not tell me of the details. But they told me that there was evidence. In that car. That led them to stray drop. So if that was evidence that led them to stray drop. Then that means Cornelia Smith. Has not told on stray drop. And they have. That's why they're not. You know. They haven't told on nobody else. 
that they're being quiet because number one, I want y'all to think about this. Straight Drop has been arrested so several times on some serious charges, y'all. And he has gotten right back out so easily. And I'm I'm sure he's connected. That's why he's gotten out so easily. But I just want y'all to think about this. This is a kid that's been getting away with a lot of stuff, just like Trap Boy. He, you know, the commissioner and everybody, you know, allegedly in Dallas, they looked out for this kid. They don't want him to have no nothing on his record or nothing, even though he's dipping, dabbling in a whole bunch of, you know, stuff that he ain't supposed to be doing. But just think about this. He keeps getting out. So is he taking these charges serious? Or is he looking at them like, whatever, I got, I'm got, i plugged with the right people that I am going to get back out of here? Because for some reason, the people that's tied to, you know, allegedly CMG and all, you know, you're guiding them and stuff. When they go to, you know, jail for them about certain situations, these people, you know, they stick it out. And just like this Keon guy, he took the 10 to 14 years like a champ. And look at the celebrities that's talking. Look at 50. I told y'all 50 Cent is saying that when he gets out of there, he's going to get him an acting role. So they're giving them, you know, rewards. The industry is giving them rewards for being quiet and not telling on everybody else. So has this been promised to Straight Drop? Do he not really take this serious? That could be why he's not talking and, uh, you know, com- you know, going along with whatever that, the, you know, the people are telling him. Do he think that, you know, he's been around God. He's been around your God's money. He see how much power that he has. Or he think he has because this has gotten a lot of attention. And I do believe they got to get to the bottom of this. It's not just about I don't I don't think it's just about the people who, you know, pull the toys out or this and that I think they're really gonna get down to the nitty-gritty of who paid for it and I'm feeling like this kid right here straight drop is the one that he's still believing that your God in them has his back now I know there are certain bloggers that's getting on YouTube and they're saying that you know First of all, they're they're asking your Gotti's lawyer to pull up on their on their page, which I think is a really unprofessional if he did come on, you know, his page and talk because he has so many ties to all these guys. This lawyer is like family. You see all the pictures that they got with him hanging out there at his you know, his birthday parties, he's at their birthday parties, his kids is around these guys. So they're they're like family. So why would you want this guy to come on your page? This is what somebody is putting out there. Um, This say no to brain cells. He's also saying that, you know, Gotti, um, he says, yo, Gotti wouldn't support no one tied to doing anything to Dolph. So that's false. That's totally false. Okay. He's saying that he don't want no ties to None of these people that didn't took out Dolph or whatever. He don't want no ties to none of this stuff. That is false. And he's saying that he wouldn't support anybody. So if that's the case, then why do Yo Gotti support, you know, the guy that's locked up for, you know, trying to hit up Dolph the first time? This Keon guy. He supports him wholeheartedly. So why do Say No to Brain Cells want us to think that, you know, he wouldn't support anybody that came after Dolph? You know, it's the way people explain things on that page and they try to act as if that they're really saying some good stuff to people. But that none of that made any sense. None of it made any sense. And then he he sits up here and he tries to say that why would he tell on one person and he ain't telling another? Now, the news that I just came out with, you know, that they just told me of them saying that, you know, he had evidence on the car. Now, I don't know if it was fingerprints because that's how they got Cornelius, through fingerprints. So, did they get straight drop through fingerprints on the car? So, they already knew the two that was involved with the car. But maybe they were sitting back just seeing what else that they were going to find out. I don't know. But it makes sense as to why he would, you know, 
everybody's wondering why would Cornelius tell on Stray Drop and not tell on everybody else and get her better deal. Maybe because he haven't told anything. Could y'all could did that, you know, come cross y'all mind that Cornelius Smith haven't said anything. And this is why he haven't said anything, because they already had evidence on Stray Drop from the white bins. Now, like I said, don't know which what it is or whatever. Um, what else did I have to tell y'all? Because it, it's so much stuff that it's not adding up as far as what people are saying right now. Now, another thing that I'm hearing is that the lawyer put out a statement saying that he was not covering anybody that was tied to Young Dolph's case. So when he said anybody, do that include his friend, you know, slash family? Because he treat these guys like family. Do that include your Gotti? Do that means that he's not going to support him as far as this case as well, as far as handling the case. Do he want to, you know, wipe his slate clean? Because now it's pulling in, you know, people digging in on him. And all of his family pictures was popping up with his kids and all of this stuff, which like I told y'all before, remember the Nipsey case. Remember when that, you know, big time lawyer tried to take the case and his family started getting threats and all of this stuff. This man knows he cannot be around his kids all the time. He knows that, you know, even though he's close to Yo Gotti, he don't live with him and he don't have Yo Gotti's money and security like Yo Gotti. You know what I'm saying? So these guys can't, you know, protect his family. So is this why he backing off of this case? And he's just going to be silently, you know, giving Yogati, you know, advice about the case and which way to turn and what, what to do. Just because he don't take the case, you know, this is what he's saying, because I don't believe it. If Yogati comes up, his name comes up and the feds come out to get him, I do believe he's going to pop up and try to support him. If he's not, then it's going to be somebody that he know that's good, that he can still sit back in a cut and have a say so in helping, you know, his friend out. So either way I go, just because he say he's not going to have any involvement in anybody that's taken on this Dolph case, that does not mean anything, okay? Now, the one thing that we do know for sure is, you know, this has been going around for the longest, for years. That in the past, Dolph and your body, they had issues, y'all. They had issues. But, you know, I'm finding out new things of people that was putting out posts after Dolph was taken out. Um, people that's tied to, you know, Yellow Beezy, which ties some old people to Dallas, is, you know, Big Juke. That's posting stuff to, you know, Yellow Beezy. You know, I'm finding out that this is Gotti's brother, your Gotti's brother. So, you know, all of this is tying in to a lot of stuff. Um, another thing that they were telling me, you know, that there were more members of, you know, people that's involved with CMG. That's what this Red Rum Street Association. And if that's the case, y'all, I want y'all to think about something very seriously, y'all. If, you know, if your Gotti is a part of... All of this mess and has ties to Yellow and Trap them and all of this stuff. Was they playing with Mo3 in the first place? Was this all a game? Ask yourself this question. And I am going to get to my Mo3 video now. Because I got, you know, I want to talk about some things about him too. So I'm just going to leave y'all with that. Did, you know, was Yo Gotti, Yo Gotti a part of this mess with Mo3? You know, him passing away on 11-11 and Yo Gotti always put out, you know, new music on 11-11. You know, at first I thought that maybe it was a jab at him. But then now I'm finding out that he has ties to all these people. Him and his CMG, you know, they've been back and forth message, messaging, you know, to trapping yellow them. Trapped and done videos saying that, you know, this guy is one of his favorite rappers. Now, could he have been jealous? Oh, let's get to the Mo3. I'm going to cut this one short right now, y'all. But I'll be back. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like this video. And thanks for watching. Peace.